How much is there a sense that the hostages have been forgotten somewhat in this crisis? Well, this, of course, is exactly what today is all about. It's about reminding everybody that ordinary civilians have been taken and held, children, elderly people, all held in the most de desperate circumstances as bargaining chips. You know, there is no humanity in that at all. The holding of hostages outlawed by the Geneva Convention you know, you cannot do that, even in the most ghastly of wars. You know, we all hate the idea of war. It's brutal, it's terrible, the death and the suffering that takes place. But the holding, deliberate holding of hostages is an utter abomination and they should be freed right now. I am powerless here, powerless to do anything physically or, you know, even communally, I'm powerless. So I wanted to be part of something which was basically a symbolic gesture. Now the lock, I think, stems from a Frenchman so in love with his girlfriend that he locked their hearts into a bridge. Uh, and it's about love, it's about compassion. Uh, so uh, our religion is full of symbols, from Seder plates to fringes on shores, and it's meant to make you think. Don't stop thinking about those hostages. They're being brutalized by Hamas, who are not pleasant people, however the UN decides to uh, call them uh, a terrorist organization or not. They're not pleasant people and they're backed by Iran. This is a war of attrition against uh, the Jewish the Jewish state existence. Whilst this is going on, weekly we're seeing pro-Hamas and now pro-Houthi demonstrations. The police have been accused of not doing enough to clamp down on anti-Jew hatred. Where do you stand on that? I wish people uh, understood more about what actually was going on. The reality is Iran sits right behind all of this. They are funding and organizing through the IRGC, the Republican Guard Corps. Uh, their hands are in everything across the Middle East now. So the Houthi are armed by them. You know, Hamas have been armed by them. Hezbollah are armed by them. You know, I Iran is right behind all of this. I have a simple position. I have called for the government to proscribe the IRGC. They are active here in London. They should not be allowed to be, and anybody involved with them uh, should find that's a criminal offence. It is high time we said enough's enough to the IRGC and they were kicked out. That's critical. That would bring a huge halt to a lot of what's going on because without Iran's funding, weaponry, organization, n many of these groups wouldn't exist. This bridge and the reception area is full of what we call in the Jewish world, Mahdas. They are leading members of the Jewish community. There are well over a hundred padlocks in front of us. Each one carries the name of a hostage. But what about people calling for jihad on the streets uh, of, of London? How is that allowed to happen? Well, it shouldn't be, and the police, if they should find them, uh, should arrest them. Because what they're calling for is violence. That's what they mean, violence. And there is no separate meaning about the phrase from the river to the sea. The leader of Hezbollah and Hamas have all said what it means. It means the eradication of the Jewish people from Palestine. It's as simple as that. It has no second meaning. So those who chant it should understand that is what they are chanting. And no one seems to be chanting to free the hostages whilst they're preaching this hate. Well, that's exactly the point. Prejudice is ignorance, and there's a lot of very ignorant people being groomed on the campuses. Uh, and uh, they don't even know where Israel is, most of them, or what they've suffered in the last 70 years, or how many times they've been evaded, or even, because it's not reported, whether 1,100 rockets are going in on a daily basis, and there's the tunnels, there they are. How would you like to have tunnels under Coventry or Birmingham? as big as the London tube system. And tunnels over the last couple of days even been found underneath UNRWA's Gaza City HQ. Thank you, thank you. We've known about the UN being a Hamas supporter for years. There are a hundred resolutions against Israel and I think three against Syria, killing 500,000 of their own citizens. It's, it's nonsense, it's nonsense. Get real.
Look at the facts, get real. My name is Noam Sagi, I'm the son of Ada Sagi. My mom was kidnapped from Kibbutz Niroz on the 7th of October and was released after 53 days. So on the 7th of October, I was uh, um, woke up here in London, so very nervous phone calls coming from Israel, uh, from my sister telling me that, you know, mom just um, got into the uh, safe room that there are terrorists with Kalashnikovs kind of going all around her house and hopefully she's fine. Actually for three weeks she was considered missing before she was officially became uh, um, a hostage. I'm very lucky that after 53 days my mom was released but we still have 30 people from this community, from my kibbutz, still there together with the other 100 and Six. Mom is very strong physically and mentally. It's a huge ordeal, you know. Um, she needs to rebuild her life at 75. It's not what she planned, but at least she have life to rebuild. Uh, so the benchmark is very low and she feels very lucky that she is in that position. Of course, it's very, very sad. She joined up with the community in their temporary accommodation and where they are now. And it's extremely sad and difficult. Um, they're broken. Whatever else one's views about the conflict, the whole holding of hostages as human shields and bargaining chips is an abomination. It's an abomination that these peaceful people had nothing to do with conflict, were taken, plucked out of their, uh, their activities and taken away. Many have died and we don't know how many more yet will have died. But to be held there as hostages, no matter what your views, what are your thoughts are, this is an abomination. So I was determined to be here to show my support, as it were, for their plight and the hope and the prayers that they could be freed very soon. And what's your hope from, from this installation today? This installation today is what another one of those reminders that they can't hear and they can't use their voice to tell us what's going on for them in the tunnels in Gaza. But it's moments like this when we transcend energy, when we come together, when we do something amazing that potentially can bring them sense of you're not forgotten, you're not alone, we are working so hard, we love you, we care about you and we will do everything possible to bring you back home. It's also helped us as families to feel that we're not alone, that we are together and it's an ongoing effort of a wider community and a country and other countries that involve uh, in this. Everyone who goes past on a bus and thinks of, you know, what am I going to buy at Waitrose? Everybody will see these locks uh, glinting in the sun and it could be their children, it could be their grandmother chained to a wall for a very long time. Give them back, give them back and the war will stop. Give them back, bring them home.